In this video, I'm going to talk about some of the tools that are available for creating entities in LibreCAD. So over here, you can see here's the tools menu, and there are a range of different tools. The first few, like lines and circles, curves, ellipses, polylines, are about creating entities in the drawing. Then there's some other tools for selecting entities, for dimensioning entities, for changing them, for measuring them, etc. I'll talk about some of these in a later video. You can see here as well that on this side there's a toolbar that has the same set of tools. So for example here is the line tool with a range of different ways of creating lines. So I'm going to start off and just talk about some of these, these tools. Um, so, And in most cases what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the snap to grid option here so that when we click our drawing will snap to one of these grid points that are visible here. So let's start off then with the probably the simplest tool is <clears throat> drawing lines. And the simplest way to draw a line is the two points tool. And if you choose that tool, you can see that I've now got this big yellow cross that is the point where the line is going to draw from. And as you can see, my cursor might not be exactly at the same point as where the cross of these, this, these yellow lines are. And that's because of this snapping tool. The yellow lines always snap to a, a point on the grid. And if I click on one of these points, I can then drag and you can see where that line is going to extend to. So I'm going to then just click over here and that's my, my point. Um, and then I can press escape to stop drawing and I've got a line that goes between two points. Another simple way of drawing a line is these two tools, the horizontal and the vertical tool. So let's draw a horizontal line. And over here you can see that we have the option of setting the length of the line and where that line is going to snap to its middle point, its starting point or its end point. So I'm going to set this to the starting point. And we've set the length to 100 millimeters. And if I click on one of these points, we then get a, a, line, a horizontal line 100 millimeters long. And I can you know, do that as many times as I need to. The vertical line tool is exactly the same. We set the length, we choose where it's going to snap to, and in this case I'm going to choose the end point, and I can then draw lines that end at the points where I've snapped to. Very similar tool as well as the, is the angle tool. In this case I'm setting the length, I'm setting the start, middle, or end point, but I can also set the angle. So in this case, I've set the angle at 30 degrees. And I can draw multiple lines if I need to, all of a length of 100 millimeters and an angle of 30 degrees from the horizontal. What other line tools do we have? Okay, we also have then a rectangle tool. This is also, this is useful if you need to draw rectangles or squares. Um, and let me point out something else over here. We have a, a a note over here that is telling you what you need to be doing next. Right. So for the rectangle, the first thing I need to do is specify the first corner. So I click to specify the first corner, and then it tells me to specify a second corner. So wherever I click, that will then be my rectangle. And then it goes back to saying specify the first corner because the tool is still selected, and I can draw another rectangle if I need to. So let's make another rectangle inside of this one. And there is my second rectangle. Alright, then I want to just quickly talk about some of these tools about drawing parallel lines. These are really useful. <clears throat> the first one is drawing a parallel line through a point. So, if I select that tool, it says select the entity. So, we need to select an entity that the new line is going to be parallel to. So, if I select this line as the entity, Notice how it changes color slightly, so we can see that it's selected. And we then get a, I can now draw a line that is parallel to that point through any other point. So if I select, for example, the end of this line, let me make it the end of that line, for example. Okay, and I click. I then have a line here that is parallel to this green line. And if I was to extend it, it would go through that point that I selected. And again, I can draw as many parallel lines as I need to through whichever points I want. So I can draw a set of parallel lines. Um, then the other parallel line tool is 
the this parallel tool. And the advantage here is I can set the distance that I want it to be parallel to the entity. So I've got it set at 25 millimeters. As you can see, as I hover over this line, it's offering to draw me a line parallel to that 25 millimeters away. And if I move slightly to the other side of the line, it's going to draw it on the other side of the line. <sighs> Edit this out. <clears throat> And I can keep going, and whenever I click, it draws another line parallel to the first at a distance of 25 millimeters. And as you can see, as my mouse moves around, it's offering to draw lines that are parallel to whichever line I'm nearest to that are parallel to that line. All right, so that's then some of the line tools. Um, one other one that's really also quite useful sometimes is the bisector tool. So if I select that, again, I need to set the length of the line that I'm drawing. Okay, And sometimes we don't necessarily know what the length is going to need to be, but we can just set an a, a default value of, let's say, 50 in this case, because we can always modify the line later um, to, to lengthen it or shorten it as necessary. And again, it's saying here now, select the first line. So if I select this line, um, and then it's offering, it's asking me to select a second line. If I choose this one, you can see it's going to draw a line that is a bisector between those two lines. Okay. Obviously, those two are at 90 degrees, so this one is at 45. But for example, let's choose something different. So it says select the first line. If I select this one, and then to select the second line, I choose this one. Okay. This new line that we've just drawn is the line that bisects the angle. Although these two lines don't actually come together and form an angle, if they did, this line would be the line that bisected that angle. All right, so that's then lines. I'll talk about these tangent lines and some of these other tools in a later video. The next thing I want to look at then is circles. And again, there's a range of ways, different ways that we can draw circles. To start with, I am going to select everything by pressing Control A and then delete just to clear up my, my drawing space. All right, so let's draw a circle. One of the easiest ways is to draw the, the center and a point. So again, notice here it says specify the center. So I specify a point and then specify the radius. And I can choose another point that then specifies the radius of that circle. Another way to draw a circle is, is to select two points. Okay, and again, specify the first point, so I choose a point, and then it says specify second point. And as you can see, wherever I move my cursor, that's where the circle's going to be. So I can then just specify a second point, and I get a new circle. Another way is to specify two points and a radius. Okay, now I've selected that, and again, notice here I have to specify the radius, and I've specified the radius to be 50 millimeters. And if I select a point, and another point. I'm now going to draw a circle that goes through those two points with a radius of 50, and it can either be kind of above that line or below those two points. And I can then just choose. What happens if I specify two points that are too far apart? My radius is set to 50. If I specify a point over here and another one over here, I get an error message over here that says that the radius 50 is too small to the, for the two points selected. So you can't do that. All right, let's look at another way of drawing a circle is three points. And I can select a point here and another point there. And then the third point would then define my circle. Now remember, very often when we're doing this, the points that we're trying to select are part of an existing drawing already. So we're gonna be snapping to parts of an existing drawing. All right, and then the last one I'm going to look at quickly is the center and the radius. Okay, and again, I've specified the radius over here. So let's make it a bit bigger. Let's make it 75. And then there's my circle that has a radius of 75 millimeters. And I just need to then specify the center point. 
Okay, so that's then lines and circles. Let's escape out of that tool and delete all of these things. So Control A to delete to select them all and delete to delete them all. The next one I want to look at then is this tool here, which is called the polyline. You'll see it over, sorry, the curve tool. Polyline is something different. The curve tool. Okay, so I'm going to look at the curve tool. So one way to draw a curve is a center and point and angles. This is, um, you'll find that this is quite a useful tool. So I'm going to specify the center over here. Then I need to specify the radius, which I can make whatever necessary. And I select that point. And now notice that it's going to draw a curve. It's asking me to specify a start angle. So let's say my start angle is here at the top, and it doesn't have the point that I select doesn't have to be on the curve. It can be any point, but it will define where that starts from. And then I need to specify the end angle. And I can specify again any point, um, and I will get a curve that starts and ends at those points. Then another way to draw a curve is to specify three points. So I'm going to specify the start point, and then it wants a second point, and then it's asking for an end point. Now this is a curve that goes through those two points, and, and then through the third point, or and ends at the third point. Okay. And as you can see, I can adjust that quite significantly. And when I click, I then have a, a curve that goes through those three points, starting at the first point, ending at the last point, and going through the, the middle point. Okay, and then I think that that's all we're going to talk about for now. We'll talk about the tangential and splines and things in another video. And then lastly, I want to talk about drawing ellipses. Okay, uh, again, there's a number of different ways that I can draw an ellipse. So for, let's take, for example, an ellipse by drawing the axes. So again, it, it asks me to specify the ellipse center. So I'm going to select a point that will be the center of the ellipse. And then it's asking to specify the end point of the major axis. So I can then choose a point, which I just clicked on. And it's asking then to specify the end, the end point or the length of the minor axis. Okay. Um, so I can choose another point to specify my ellipse. Another way of drawing an ellipse is to draw the two foci points. So again, here it says specify the first focus of the ellipse. I can choose a point. And then the second focus of the ellipse, I'm going to choose a point down here. And then specify a point on the ellipse that then defines the overall size of the ellipse. And I can specify that point there. And then lastly, I want to talk about drawing an inscribed ellipse. This will be quite useful when we do isometric drawings. And as I've mentioned in class, to draw an isometric ellipse, it's usually a good idea to draw the enclosing box first. So what I'm going to do now, um, I'm going to draw a rectangle and then I'm going to put a an ellipse inside that. Okay. So, okay, so I went to draw a rectangle. So I'm going to draw a Use the rectangle tool to draw a rectangle. And then I'm going to escape out of that tool and go back to my ellipse tool and choose the ellipse inscribed. And notice here it says specify the first line. So I'm going to click on one of the lines of the rectangle. And then it says specify the second. So I choose another one. And then specify the third. So I choose another one. And then it says specify the fourth one. And as I get close to it, you can see that it's showing me where it's going to join that draw that ellipse, and I click, and now I have an ellipse that is inscribed into a rectangle. And if, I'm, if I don't actually want the rectangle, then I can escape out of the ellipse tool, select the rectangle, press delete, and I've got just the ellipse that I wanted. All right, so that's everything that I wanted to talk about for this video. We will cover some of the more, some of the other tools in a later video. Thanks for watching.